the new event going on. I hope this isn't so close to to this quest. Uh, let's check on Catherine because I've been avoiding her here for a while now. This goes fast. It's mostly just an introduction. Quit following me. We'll get to another quest as well. Oh, they, this is the closest one to a teleport. This looks nice. Be an extra oh, she has a dive machine. Cool. And as from Susk, welcome to the Rangers Guild. Is there something I can help you with? It's Catherine again. This one must be a puppet too, perhaps. There shouldn't be another possibility. Well, no, there may be an original one that all of them are based. Is there something I can help with? Are you looking to take on a commission or send one out? I'm just taking a look. I see. If you run into any guild related issues, you can come ask me. I'll provide the utmost service for you and answer all answerable questions. But this one is. It seems like she doesn't know me. The way she's talking. Then we thank you for your contribution to the guild adventure. We wish you smooth travels. Just that? Just that? Can we play banker next time? Come on. Add Astra Let's see. We meet again, Catherine. Hello there. The pleasure is mine. I'm Catherine, the receptionist of the Adventures Guild. My job is to provide the adventurers with quests and intelligence support. May my services be of help to you, and may your journey in Fontaine be a memorable one. Add Astra. Are you also a clockwork puppet, Catherine? Huh, I wonder. Do I appear like a masterpiece of the Fontaine Research Institute to some? Add Astra Abyssos. Oh, I don't remember. She's in, she's in aware that she's a puppet. Uh, well, let's take a look around here. Hello, dear customer. I'm Carol, the owner of the shop. What can I do for you? There's a lot of people who got here. Is there some event going on? Oh, no, I wouldn't call it that. We just have a new product, a toy to be precise. The one at the entrance. That there? If you're interested, you can come and try it out anytime. I thought I'll be able to buy. You have an icon up there. Oh no, that's just the icon. Yeah, you people are excited the icon, you thought it's right here. What's the big deal? It just rotates. Hello, you two. My name is Armand. Just that? Yeah. Oh. I thought you guys would do something. You have a different icon. I think it will become something eventually. Is this open already? Welcome to Bertin's House of Curiosities. You're a collector. Not exactly. I'm actually a clothes designer. You, if you ask someone in Fontaine about tailoring recommendations, there's a good chance that you'll either hear my name or that of Kyori. Uh, is collecting a hobby of yours? Yes, it's also a way of seeking Zen inspiration. I believe that only those that are completely forgotten can become something that is brand new. Fashion is a loop of becoming outdated and then coming back in trend. If you are interested, take this. It's no longer useful to me anyway. 
Oh. Uh, a collector. Kyori. Refer to Kyoria Boutique's Kyori, a designer from Inazuma. Her tastes aren't bad, but we've got difference, uh, differences in idea. She's also rather big character. Even her works do not satisfy her. Uh, the last time I spoke to her of a design flaw in her work, not only did she not get angry, but she even picked at her, her own work more vehemently than I. Uh, I didn't dare to put a word in lengthwise. Hmm. An antique's <clears throat> value is and what do you sell here? I apologize, but I haven't encountered anything that catches my face lately. Come again to please. Mm, so it's probably after completing some stuff. Well, I suppose that's it for now. So mm, same automatic forging or steamboard. This sounds like mm, this could go as an investigative question stuff. Let's see this one. Yeah, this looks cool, but not that advanced. Yes. There's no need to exchange pleasantries. It's rather pathetic to force a conversation. Still. You know, there's still room for improvement here. The hammering force still isn't quite right. The materials used are all the same. So. Is this due to the difference in forging methods? One where the harder material is made into the outer layer and one where it becomes the inner layers instead? If that's the case, should the corresponding force be preset or should I make an adaptive mechanism that sets a force based on forging methods instead? Uh, you know, this machine really is fascinating up close. The way it just clings on the metal by itself, at this rate, it feels like you wouldn't need a blacksmith at all. And this machine isn't smart enough to not need a blacksmith yet. When you need to make something, there are still countless little details that need to be tuned. And the tempering and polishing needs to be done manually as well. However, one day, I will turn it into a fully automated forge. Anyway, do you have a commission for me? Uh, that hinges on how well the auto smith can perform. Then I gotta show you what I got. Uh, so I'm the blacksmith too, uh, not just the boss. That's right, I wear both hats, wheel both hammers, however you want to put it. Surprise, huh? People who find out about me for the first time all end up making the expressions you are making right now. Where are the solid chunks of muscles on her arms? She's even leaner than the average person. Yeah, that's right. Can someone like that really work as a blacksmith? Mm, those aren't Paimon's thoughts. Paimon just continued your hypothetical conversation without even realizing it. <laughs> no face taken, truth be told, letting someone as feeble in body as I serve as a blacksmith is the main point of this machine. Humans can use tools, and exquisitely designed tools can make the impossible possible. Some say that all automated forgings are hollow and soulless, but if you ask me, the machine is just as much of a tool as a regular smith's hammer. Really, I would love to see those smiths knock metal into shape with their bare hands. Anyway, I digress. I'll forge a razor sharp sword for you right away. Uh, but it seems like I run out of materials. It appears we've used up too much of our materials during the previous rounds of experiments. What should I do? 
Oh, Paimon knows. For next phase, Paimon must pull on a mysterious lever. Once Paimon has done that, the forge will rattle and chime before transforming into a mobile mechanism that will leave to see materials on its own. Hmm, automated material gathering machines. Feel like that will be a high demanding design as well. But how shall they differentiate between different forms of matter? Could they perhaps use the external reflectivity of surfaces to judge the properties of an object? Miss Tell? Ah, oh, apologies, I got distracted. As it stands, the auto smith is just a hammer mechanism. It cannot transform nor run on its own. All the materials it, it uses must still be delivered by human beings. Uh -huh. But if you're interested, you can also give me any spare materials you have collected when one is testing and tuning their auto smith. There is always a scarcity of resources. In return, let me offer you some designs from this workshop. I smell trade secrets. Are you sure that's okay? How should I put it? To me, what matters isn't the product that is forged, but the tool used for forging. Letting the autosmith work with different materials to procure more data sets will help the machine create better products down the line. The designs, contrarily, are of lesser importance. So, are we interested in more than just forging materials? We are interested in more than just forging materials. Feel free to bring over anything that you think might be useful. Uh, you aren't trying to scam us with some strange and useless designs, are you? What if the next time we're back we just find an empty shop with no set of view, the autosmith, or the materials we handed over to you? No, that will never happen. This counts as a long-term partnership. In such relationships, nothing is more important than trust. I will make sure that the designs will be of the highest quality. Besides, even if I could run, it won't be easy to easy for the auto smith to sprawl legs and fall. That's a fair point. Well, that settles it then. I'm looking forward to working with you. I hope this partnership will benefit both of us. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing what kinds of materials you will bring to the forge. Just that as well. But do you have blueprints I can buy or something? Some weapons. Take your pick. Uh -huh. Huh. Oh. Oh, I trade for this stuff. Interesting. They regular left for me. It wasn't like that in Zuma in Sumer, was it? The doll of deep. Song of Stillness. Oh, this looks nice. Tide of Shadow. Flow of Impurity. And Rightful Reward. Yeah, I don't care much for this one, but I like the others. Yeah, I'll equip people for haunting with those. Um, is this machine used to forge weapons? That's right, I'm very proud of this one. In fact, after all, our machine is not eminently suited to this energy intensive work we call forging, being able to control strength and temperature precisely as they are. Even some of the most ordinary of physical qualities, like me, can make exquisite hound weaponry, just like those Moscow Smiths. Could you tell me about the prophecy? Ah, you finished delivering magic pockets with the, the magician, I see. Good work. To be honest, I think he's influenced me a bit. I couldn't help but send some of my friends a couple of those pockets. I was originally a renowned scientist working at the Fontaine Research Institute. Uh, by right, I shouldn't believe in such things. But as I say, never hurts to be prepared. A rigorous researcher should take all manner of possibilities into consideration. Okay, so maybe this one will be fast as well. Uh, 
Do I have the port closer? Yeah. Check that, Sir Arthur. Extra, extra, big fish Alejandro of the Borgia family passed on recently. <laughs> he is illegitimate son, priest Cesare, has temporarily taken charges as clan patriarch. Experts say that this will inevitably plunge the family into chaos. Uh, extra, extra, the construction of the Lumidos Harbor Line will start soon. Estimates say that the line will be available within a decade. <laughs> Recently, Francis the Blue Moon has once more denied any accusations of nepotistic relationship, relations with the Borgia family. Uh, I don't know what you are uh, asking about, there's no such thing as a mafia fountain. <laughs> Extra Extra, Monteverdi's famous opera, Tancred et Cari Cariclia, will be showing at the opera Epicles once more. The renowned actor team up of Frederick the Quicksilver and Monserrat Caval will be returning. Okay. Another 20 redundant departments formerly belonging to the Fountain Research Institute of Kinetic Energy Engineering have been abolished. Experts claim that this will speed the rebuilding process up by 30 years. So we'll never see that thing <laughs> working, right? Oh, the mechanism looks like a fountain pen. All citizens, please beware of the baseless rumors that the construction of the Luminous Herbal Line will start soon. A grave treasure, tragedy, a legendary champion duelist, third year undefeated streak has been shattered. Guillaume Murray, the renowned champion duelist, suffered fatal cardiac arrest at home from a well lock pistol misfire while expanding the duo that made him famous to a guest. Today's review at the Steambird, famed Epicles director Coppola Priest will personally explain the masterpiece Apocalypse when. <laughs> uh, lovely posters come with this edition. Hello, hello. Recently, Francis Moon. Okay, same thing. Okay, maybe we got them all, maybe not. Chief Editor. Okay, truly spectacular weather today, no? Quite comfortable. If only the weather was this cooperative every workday, I should be quite merry indeed. And speaking of work, my dear, you are here to interview for the troubleshooter position. Advertised in our Tales of Humanity section, are not? Troubleshooter? Yes, yes, I know. The name Troubleshooter is simply too gosh and unbecoming of the standards of a publication such as ours. Yes, Eaton has substantial room for growth when it comes to coining new words. Putting that aside for a moment, would you like to know how I was able to correctly ascertain that you were here for the job and not seeking to ask for help in our Tales of Humanity section? Observation. Every citizen who comes to the Steambird seeking help, help appears anxious and jittery. But you, your steps are relaxed and your expression calm. Those who are fortunate are all the same. Those who fall victim to misfortune I'll have their own woes, uh, but you needn't worry. Those who seek assistance from others via Tales of Humanity haven't run into any serious trouble, so it shouldn't be hard to handle. Have you have a look at this batch of commission, commissions. 
Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's that. Okay, but I need more reputation. Yeah, I need those for reputation. Yeah, exploration. Another recipe. What's that? Oh, crystal flight trap. Uh, research. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to read. I don't want to know what how this works. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense that it's blue because of water, but I already have a few blue ones. Uh, uh, wind power, wind generator. Hang on, wind generating device developed by Refage. Turn the research early. after being made. This device can provide strong lifting force for the wind glider user. However, to the implementation, the device requires utilizing the wind with power to activate. The wind energy requires approximately equal to that produced by the working wind glider. Huh? So I mean, I can only activate this device when I'm already using the wind glider. But the only reason I even want to activate it is to give my wind glider a push. Uh, okay, so I have to be gliding already. So I can just put it on the ground and propel myself up. We should be able since there are characters that do this already. This could be helpful for any character to do that. Okay, but I'm just not sure if this would strong lifting force. So this would probably give me another boost upwards, not forwards, while gliding. And another one. Mm -mm, the treasure compass and this wing. Ah, oh, it's a different color to the other side. Mm. Alright, uh, all I need to do is find some time every week to read through the submissions to Tales of Humanity, pick out a few commissions you would like to handle, and come find me and collect your payment. Some commissions are so drop that simple you wouldn't believe it, but you shouldn't underestimate the value of your work. For us, the problems in their submissions may appear to be easy and insignificant. But for the readers submitting the problems, they are like a splinter under their fingers, impossible to remove or ignore. If we can help them extract the splinters, then in addition to the monetary rewards, you will also receive the respect and gratitude of the people, and your reputation among the citizenry will increase over time. When that happens, I will give you more complicated and important jobs. I prefer to achieve happiness and be a lighthouse illuminating humanity, such as the calling of our paper. Such are the feelings and aspirations of every publisher. No need for an interview. Interview? Your interview was complete before you even arrived. Don't be surprised, I have my ways. If I couldn't even manage that, how could I manage the newspaper? Alright, I told you everything you need to know about this job, as for whether or not you want to take it, that's up to you. Think it over. A good newspaper should be a lighthouse okay. of truth. I thought this quest was with Charlotte. So I guess I'll continue this quest. Mm, I'm just clear that. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Let's continue that. We need to fix that dog. The talking dog. There was a talking bird right now, and, and Paimon didn't care about it. Uh, okay, I suppose I had to make complete several, I hope, small quests to get pieces for them uh, but let's go to where it's pointing me towards can I die here is there any point
Is there a tall stranger? Sounds like someone's calling us out. You? I have finally looked over. Hello there, tall stranger and short stranger. Famous Paimon, he's Ignis. Alright, I got it. Mr. Ignis and Miss Paimon, welcome to Mercy Village, Miss. I'm sorry, so sorry. I'm just used to being considerate to people in the village. Miss Pime also looked like she could use some care, so I just call her that without thinking. Uh, Pime probably could use some more care indeed. Hey, Pime cares for you all the time too, you know? Still, what's your name? I'm Serene, just call me Serene. I heard you were trying to collect components. This only happened. You explain everything that happened before to Serene. I didn't think something like that would occur. This must be reported to Monsieur Novelet immediately. Thank you, Mr. Ings and Miss Paimon. If it weren't for you, something worse would have definitely followed. But Samer still broken still broke down. Uh, so that's why you were collecting comments, yes? I thought we just told you. Yeah, though so we're not really sure how to fix him right now. We were thinking that after getting the components, we could go somewhere like the Fountain Research Institute and find someone to help us. If that's the case, then please take this. Uh, are these components or just giving them to us? Thank you. Do you need us to help you with that thing? Uh, uh, no, I didn't mean to use this to get your help or anything. Well, either Ignis or Mamir are going to need those components, right? So just accept them. Thank you. It should be... I should be the one thanking you. Thank you for taking care of Mamir. That child's always alone and never tells me about anything. Uh, so seeing her joyously talking with someone, and that someone being an outsider human friend as well, makes me happy. So, if I am, I have more components, maybe that could solve the problem immediately, right? It's as I expected. It will take, take more hard work on my part to bear assist everyone. Come on, we've already helped us. Anyway, we'll be taking these components. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Serene. Right, where can we find more components? Uh, let me think. You can check the areas around the village. If you're lucky, you might be able to pick up some scattered components. But this method alone isn't that efficient. So why don't you ask the villagers if they need help with anything? I'm sure they'll give you components in exchange for the help. Mm -hmm. There is much left to do today. Are you? Are there any medicines around who might need help? Uh, let me think about this. Well, there's Yara. She seems to be having some trouble with fishing. Fishing? Yeah, she said that she met an angler named Della Roche. I uh, learned fishing skills from her. Despite that, she's been unable to catch anything, much to her consternation. Okay, I, I met with Della Roche already and to craft the baits of Fountain. Della Rush, seriously, I think she might have gone for the wrong teacher. Ah, is that because I know her already? Or... Oh, is that so? Oh dear. Uh, I'm not sure how I can help her. I've given it some thoughtful. If all else fails, I can play the role of the fish myself. But that's not really a solution I call good, so could you try helping her? No problem, I'm a real pro. Wonderful. She should still be trying to fish at the south side of the village, so please you can give her some pointers. Could you tell me about the Mercy Village? Uh, is this your first time here? Well, in that case, welcome. This is the home of us, Melzins, but as you can see, owing to the location, we don't get many human visitors. Be sure to let me know if you run into any trouble here. 
or if you need anything at all. Are you the village head? The village head? Do you mean the person who's in charge of everyone? I don't think that describes me. I'm just a little older than the other kids. As everyone's big sister, it's it's, it's my responsibility to help with day-to-day -day issues. You're the oldest and everyone's considered a child. Where did you guys come from? That's right, I've got to look after everyone. Uh, it's kind of water bubbles that come from. Who's the one? This one fish. Ah. I spoke to you before. Cosanzianza. Yes, wow, the bringers of exotic flowers. Hello, Cosanziana. Uh have the flowers you brought been growing well? Uh, about that. I haven't gone to look at them for a while a whole day. Uh didn't you like the flowers? Why aren't you looking after them? Oh, they were so hard to get, so I do want to take good care of them. So, so much. When I think that they might wither before my eyes, I am scared to go. Oh, wow, you really are very concerned about them. Why don't we go have a look together? If anything bad happens, we'll help you out. There's no point in worrying too much. You're right. Let's go together. With the two of you to help me, I feel we can handle this. I thought it would be strange stuff. And we will get another one. Oh. My precious flowers, they've been ruined. They have? Oh, I think there were more. Oh no, what a pity. So, the reason your flowers couldn't grow is because of the damage done by the British Primus. I'm going to keep watch next to my flowers for now on. I'm never leaving again. Wait, calm down for a second, Constanziana. Uh, let's think of another solution together. First off, why would the British Primus damage your flower garden. When you brought our flowers back before, did any British Primuses come after you? No, never. Mm, that bad guy would only dare to do such thing behind my back. Uh, now I'm really mad. Oh, uh, Paimon didn't expect Constanziana to could also get so angry. Yeah, she really does care a lot about these flowers. Well, thinking back a moment, it's not like the premises ran away once she got close. Perhaps it's not the flowers that are attracting them. That's possible. Let's check the area around the garden and see what we can find. Huh, too slow. Nothing special. The scene. There's anything here. Uh. What's bird here? Oh, look out. Gather! Coming through! Also, Venus, turn that ugly machine into beautiful components. Kaban, just like that. Well, you won't be troubling this garden again. Some of the flowers have been damaged, but the rest still look like they're in good shape. There shouldn't be any British princess coming around to trouble your garden again. So your flowers can now grow strong and healthy. This is great. Still, I've learned my lesson. Such precious flowers require attentive care and diligent protection. 
Anus, Paimon, you've brought me such exotic flowers, and you've even helped me defend my garden. How can I ever repay you? Oh, no need to be so polite about it. Yes, I know. I picked these flowers myself. They are very precious to me. Can I give them to you? Uh, if these flowers really are that precious, then you should probably start your own garden to plant them in. Anus. Speaking of which, uh, aren't these Tidalga? Do they really count as flowers? Tidalga are plants and they are very beautiful. So, of course, they're flowers. This is why humans call biology. I've spent some time studying it so that I can become a great florist in the future. <laughs> well, it feels like there's something kind of off about this. But it's not like Paimon knows too much about playing taxonomy either. I want you to work hard toward the goal. I've heard humans say that excellent florists are able to bring new types of flowers, which they then bring to horticultural fairs. I want to do that too, and I want to win awards there. You know, that's very commendable and everything, but Paimon feels like they are Still some misunderstandings here that will be hard to explain. Her purpose for taking part in a horticultural fair is to show off the new varieties of plants she's made and let humans appreciate them, right? The thing is, her senses and aesthetics might be a bit too different from those of humans. You think they might find her, the flowers she breeds weird? She hasn't breed any flowers yet. You're rather invested in her horticultural career, see? Of course, Paimon's her teacher, you know? If she wins, Paimon will look good too. Wow, I don't think there was ever that much text here. There's no need to be too obsessed with winning awards. The most important thing is to be happy with your work. You think your first step towards success? Yeah, the first one. That's true, the only person who needs to find the flowers you raise beautiful is you. You don't have to worry too much about what other people think. You just need to care to take care of your garden, watch the lovely flowers, and be happy every day. Yes, I'll make sure they grow up healthy and strong. So components, no. Let me pay attention, I got components right destroying that. Quit following me! Renata. Mm -hmm. Tidalga slurry, the crushed innards of Lumito, and a little. Wait, how much is a little exactly? Uh, hey, are you making some soup? Oh, that smells really weird. Mm, it smells weird. That can be. I followed the form. I followed the formula Carabos gave me exactly, so it should smell normal. Smells like someone fermented a sea bass for three years in a vat of dead frogs. Uh, if calm down a bit, you can smell the fragrance of sweet flowers. Let's be polite. <laughs> hey, that's not right either. Anyway, what are you doing? Do you need help? It's a potion. I'm formulating a potion. One that will help a lot of people. So you're a potioneer, then? Not yet. I'm just an assistant to a master potioneer. Her name is Carbos. Carbos? Uh, I, Verenata, still have much to learn from her. Uh, well, an assistant to a great doctor must be a great assistant, right? Uh, yeah, wait, no, not at all. Um, there are so many things I still don't know. I'm just working as hard as I can to help her make potions. Also, uh, I've told you my name, but I don't know yours yet. Paimon's Paimon, he's Ignus. Paimon, that's a nice name. Reminds me of a noisy white jellyfish. Ignus, that's a slightly strange name. Uh, it gleams like gold, but it's very friendly. Pleased to meet you. Uh, well, you just ask if I need help, 
And I do, but I don't know if you'd be willing to help. Ask away. Exactly. If you need help, you should just say so. I'd like you to try my new potions. <laughs> I know potions smell and taste bad, but they can help lots of people and cure many illnesses. They're very useful things. But we can get sick and we don't like drinking strange things. And over time, people stopped helping me taste my potions, and that's been a big problem for me. Uh, you're the one who said this stuff is weird. It isn't dangerous, is it? It's fine, we don't get poisoned by them, uh, so you shouldn't either. Well, at least in theory, anyway. There are a total of three potions that need testing. One will help people fight better, the other will help people feeling warm, and the last one... I'm not sure how to put this, but Carabos said that you can help people understand the truth. That's what she said. Anyway, I'm still not sure what it means. That sounds, that sounds dangerous. No, no, it's not dangerous. Anyway, would like to help. If you would, I'll take you to the test site now. I'll help you, let's go. Just don't go drinking yourself into danger. A while later, you will at the beach. Understand the truth sounds like gaining more experience for combat. Thank you, let's try the first time then. Don't drink too much of it, you know, just spit out if something feels off, okay? Don't worry, Paimon, I'll be fine. No, Paimon's just worried, you know? I'm ready. Pass me the potion. This one is called the Super Duper Potion. And it'll make you super strong. Well, in theory at least. You take the potion from Renata and drink it in one go. It has a pungent odor uh, that's hard to bear. But it tastes sweet and sticky. And isn't hard to swallow. Otherwise, however, your body has no reaction to it. At her direction, you then wait until some richer premises become active. This is order. Solidify, wretched vermin. Behold. The wind rises. That's far enough. Stabilize. Order guide you. Behold. Too slow. Uh, so, did you defeat those creatures so easily because of super duper potion? Exactly. You could even say it gave me super duper powers. No, it seemed like the regular damage. I didn't feel much, but it was pretty sweet. Um, but it smelled terrible. Mm, is that so? Did I get something wrong? Don't be so down. At least it wasn't poisonous. <laughs> we can take that as a win, right? Alright then, let's bring the super duper potion test into a close first. Next, let's test the Cozy Toasty potion. Did you uh, come up with these names yourself? No, I'm no good at making up names, so I just let others help come help me come up with much better ones. Well, uh, don't say that. Really, uh, for something like potions, the name should let you know what it does right away, right? I never heard that before, but you're right. That's what a master potion you should be like. Uh, anyway, are you ready to test this potion? 
Sure, let's start. But it's one smells like a disaster too. Theoretically, this Cosytosy potion will spare you from the effects of the cold and keep you warm. Yeah, probably. You take the potion from Renata. It smells like dusty, musty old leather. You hesitate for a moment before drinking it all in one cup. It's not a bad tasting drink. Being spicy with hints of cinnamon and ginger. It reminds you of a crackling fireplace on a rainy day. Otherwise, however, your body has no reaction to it. Is there a cold in Fontaine? At once, you rest for a while at her instruction. Oh, some monsters. So many cramps. Can you actually do the opposite then? Squall and Fury! What's the most thing that was from my main episode out when I start this fight? Uh, what do I was saying? This isn't quite the expected effect. And the water is almost dead. Are you alright? Are you okay? Sorry, sorry, I didn't know that the messy would attract strange things like that. Damn, because the potion made me all coasty and toasty, you know? Don't worry, power slimes are weak. Uh, is that even how things work? Can you be coasty? Oh, right, aquatic animals do mistake warm things for the sun, which will attract them. That means the potion worked. Thanks, you both. Truly. Pamu really doesn't think that's how it works. Aquatic animals weren't those pirate slimes. I see. Uh, hallucinogenic side effects. Alright, I read it down. Okay, so those were crabs, and I will see them. Uh, well. At least it wasn't completely ineffective, but but its effects were terrible. It made huge crabs look like pear slime this time. Uh, but what if a more dangerous monster comes along next time? What then? True, I already bothered you two so much already. But there's one final potion that needs testing. Are you still okay with that? As long as it's not poisonous, let's do it. I've gotten too far. So, we only find out if it's poisonous when we test it. Yes, thank you so much. Well, next up is the True Sight Potion. Uh, wait just a minute. The first one was Super Duper Potion, the next one was Cozy Toast Potion, and this one is called the True Sight Potion. Which means it can let people see the truth. What's wrong with that? It's nothing. I'm just thinking that this one's name is completely different compared to the others. It's like a 306 degree turn. Yeah, you mean 800... <laughs> uh, uh, 180 degrees, right? Uh, does that mean it's not so different? Uh, Paimon doesn't have that many, that many fingers. You don't count angles with fingers. <laughs> you know what Paimon meant anyway. Uh... Uh, that's because the Master Potioneer named the first two for me, and I named this one. I'm no good at names though, so it's definitely not as good as names she came up with. Really, Pamela thought it was the water way around. Either way, had some more confidence. In fact, that's a proper name for a potion. Uh, thanks. Anyway, this potion is different from the previous two. So it might be very dangerous, so please come to my workshop. If we are in the sea, the environment should help moderate the potion's effect. And my workshop has tools to deal with the dangers, so... Wow, this one sounds like a real doozy. Let's begin then. Alright, follow me. Follow you. Following me, yeah, 
here, this is my workshop where I conduct my experiments. Okay, for the next experiment, we'll be testing the true side potion. Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, please be careful. You take the potion from Virenata and the rank odor of masses of dead seagrass left to rot under the tropical sun assaults your nostrils, causing you to gag involuntarily. You hesitate for a moment and then drain it in a single gulp. The taste of the potion itself isn't nearly so awful, in fact, if it really lacks any kind of distinct taste. And otherwise, however, your body has no reaction to it, so it tastes like water. Afterwards, you rest for a while at her instruction, absolutely nothing changed during that time. But not long after... Oh, cool. It looks like nothing has changed. Ooh, Paimon can stop worrying now. Yes, but it does it look like you were stunned for a moment. What's wrong? Did you see something? I saw half of a semi-transparent boat. Really? Fascinating. But uh, can you provide more detailed description? Which were far away, I couldn't see clearly. It looked like it had been cut in half by something huge. I don't know, I didn't know if it was cut. How very interesting, yes indeed. But it cannot serve as concrete proof of the potion's effect. You can prove that you didn't mistake some reef or shipwreck for a ghost ship after that. Oh. Uh, the results of this experiment are inconclusive. Thanks to you both, I've collected a great many awesome notes this time. I'll definitely be able to use them for the next batch of potions. Although so I've heard something very familiar. Yes, but there's still so much to observe to see if others can see the same phenomenon. Uh, does that mean that you still need to find other people to help you test your potions? Yes, that's correct. Because uh, I must have two or more reliable witnesses who will see the same thing in order to prove that the potion really can allow people to see the truth, right? The truth will not be limited or constrained by the eyes and perspectives of the viewer and wouldn't be distorted by what is in their heart. It's object it objectively exists there and it just is. Uh, like, like gods that live for thousands of, thousands of years. No, like the white sand, like the bones of sea stars, like the waves that crash and pound, those are truth. But the Master Potionier has also said that truth can also be created through dreams and memories. I don't quite get it, and it seems like a contradiction to me, but I'm trying my best to understand. Wow, the topic got, topic got so deep so quickly. <laughs> then let's not talk about such things for now. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for your help. Please take this. Uh, also, be sure to come back again next time I make new potion. Should be enough, right? Come on, let's go back. If you're my mirror. Ah, I wasn't. There's supposed to be another. Let's heal first. Wasn't I supposed to meet with another one that was fishing? Uh, only place. She said to the south, right? Uh, so I guess it's following there. Let's look for the fisher one first. Uh. Here? No? Hmm? We're doing one under a waterfall. That's considered a waterfall. Isn't that short? It has another name, doesn't it? Are you gonna take a bath or something? Uh, if that's the case, we won't disturb you. What? 
what a bath, I am pondering some profound questions. If I must say, I suppose I am meditating. If you hadn't come thundering along and interrupted my train of thought, perhaps I would have already come up with the answers. Meditating? We are really sorry. Let me see, a human most strange and a rainbow balloon. You two must be from outside the village. Right, but I must find his ignorance. Wait a second. So you were right to say we are not from here. What do you mean, a rainbow balloon? Oh, right, you might not see it that way. I almost forgot about that again. Let me think. Right, Ignis, what does Paimon look like to you? She looks like a white specter, like emergency food. The specter now. A sec. Don't people use specter as an insult? <laughs> Interesting. But to my eyes, Paimon is just like a little rainbow balloon floating in the air, and her string seems to extend upward. To somewhere above the sky itself. Oh, that's some deep lore stuff. Is she being controlled by the heavenly principles or something? What about the string that the Lenny made for me to carry Paimon around? And seriously. Yes, and just what does Ignis look to your eyes, Paimon? Uh, of course, Paimon's gonna hear your traveling companion. Don't tell Paimon you see something else. What I see, if I really must say, then I see a monster that looks like it could swallow the whole world in a single bite. I'm not that strong yet. That's way too scary. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Perhaps you've heard that we Melusines can see things that human cannot see. But for some reason, I see things differently. Even when compared to other Melusines, I can always find things that have been hidden. Have I have read that the nature of things is hidden beneath them, and this nature decides their future. Oh, that's some deep lore bomb there. The, the heavenly principles have good reason to go after the siblings. He has the capacity to destroy the world. Not that I know what that means. If that's the case, how did you know that we are outsiders? Well, though we, what we see is different, we can still find ideas that we have in common. Just like how you can tell a flower is a flower, no matter how strange the color, right? As long as I spend enough time with everyone, I can grasp the concepts that everyone talks about and then pretend to fit in. If you hadn't looked special in my eyes at all, I wouldn't have struggled to find the right concept to describe you. As I thought, it seems that I still have lots to learn. Uh, that's a whole bunch of stuff that Paimon didn't really get. On that note, we've been talking for ages, but we don't even know your name. What is a name but an artificial code that covers false uniformity on different perceptions? Uh, still, everyone calls me Canotilla, and you may do so as well. I want to save grain confers false uniformity. It grants false individuality because you try to different people with different names, right? Uh, wow, you talk in such a roundabout way, just like scholar. What about? Is that how you see it? I don't usually talk with humans from outside, so I don't quite understand your methods of communication. I am merely making deductions and inferences based on what I've read in books. You keep talking about what you've read in books. Do Melusines read up read you? You must be really it must be really inconvenient for you to turn pages, right? I wasn't expecting there to be books here. 
Yeah, I'm more worried about the water than their hands, but this seems funnier. But maybe they don't use their hands, but the fillers on their heads. Uh, wait, that's not the point. Still, Paimon wasn't expecting there were there to be books in here. Yes, an amazing scholar left them behind, all hidden inside a secret base. All of what I just said, I learned from those books. There is even a book there that I just couldn't understand. Meditation has allowed me to comprehend it, ever so little of it. But lately, I've been making no progress, no matter how I rack my brain. That's why I came here to meditate and try to find a way forward. But a book that can't be understood, aren't arcane, arcane secrets never meant to be known by anyone, usually encrypted in books like that. Speaking of secrets, that usually means treasure. Now that Paimon thinks about it, she's getting curiouser and curiouser. If you're interested, why don't I take you there to have a look? The book is important to me and I must find a way to understand it. You appear to be knowledgeable, well-informed outsiders, perhaps you'll be able to uh, understand that book quite easily. I certainly solved puzzle 2. Our experiences, experiences tend to be more on the practical side. That's right, we're like super professionals at this. Come on, Kanochila, show us the way. Okay, so I guess I'll fish later. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Oh no, there's there's still part there. Quit following me. And we're here. If you dive down below this entrance, we'll find a place where the scholar once hid the books. So how did you bring the book here? Without getting wet. But it looks like a northern pond. What sort of entrance are you talking about? Alright, it is being hidden, after all. So you won't be able to see. Just watch then. Gantilla takes out something that looks like a key, tracing the air along some unseen trail. There is a soft chime, and the shallow pool before you suddenly becomes unfathomable deep. Well, here's the entrance now. Oh, but I couldn't tell how you did that. Well, I can't quite explain either, but while others can see it, there are actually all sorts of fissures here. As long as I use my token to draw a line across those fissures, I can do some incredible things. That said, I don't know why they are only present here. As such, I did a lot of research until I found that in the indecipherable book. It has much to do with me and my talking, and I'm also certain that if I figure it out, I'll know why I'm special this way. That's quite a burden. There's nothing wrong with being special. Well then, that's enough of that, so let's go inside. I must find a way to understand this strange book. <laughs> oh. Yeah, not shady at all. So you can't understand it all at all either, after all. Not a single word. I reckon we should look more co closely. You stare at the runes on the page for some time. The runes slowly start to disintegrate and reassemble themselves, becoming new words. At the same time, your understanding your surroundings uh, seems to recede and you arrive in a strange new place. I see. This is a world where 
Even sweet flowers and mint cannot grow. Can you see it too? You turn around and look at the source of the voice, but are suddenly awakened. Looking back at the book, it looks just like it did originally, as though nothing happened. So, did you discover anything? It was like I entered a strange place. I think I saw the runes dissolving and they were constructing themselves. A strange place. A strange place? But you were here the whole time. Did you just stare too intensely or something? I knew you'd be able to see it too. Mm, have you uh, had the same experience, Kanatila? Is this what you meant by meditating? Yes. Oh, I can't understand a single word in the book. I get a strange feeling from looking at it for long enough. It feels as though you've been transported to another world, and then you can start to understand the book's contents. But as soon as you awake, you are back to being unable to comprehend it. Then, what have you seen before? Oh, wait just a moment. And that, this is my notebook. I've written down everything I saw inside. Mm, that said, I wrote it all down while I was meditating, and I was sort of in a trance, so it might be a bit hard to understand. Let my mom see. Yep, this is really messy. Wow. But it says something about an um, Elinus or something like that. Even when meditating, I can make heads or tails of what comes before and after. As such, though I can understand just a little bit, I still don't know what it is really saying. If I'm not mistaken, however, the book's still missing a lot of content. The notebook does mention a few locations. Oh, so you mean that these locations might be clues? Locations? Yes, the names of the locations are written between important actions. Could it be trying to tell us where critical parts of the text are hidden? I mean, I've guessed as much in the past, but I've never left Elena, so... In that case, why don't you stay here, Kanatila? We'll go investigate the places in the notebook, maybe we'll find the missing pieces. And besides, it's related to Elena, so there's no way we're going to ignore it. Alright. In that case, I'm counting on you too. If you find anything, just bring it back. I'll be waiting here for you. Uh, find the pages. Uh, I've read... Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Nobody mentioned it yet, so uh, I knew I read this somewhere, but... I didn't really pay attention to where. Uh, is this area or the whole island? Hmm, but it's marked already. And the pages. Uh, and I got one of them already. Or the missing person case or whatever. Ah, I kept those. Uh, 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 the book, the book, the book. The magic page, a page with contents are. This one. Okay. I think I got this one while exploring. One of those places here. I killed some dogs, some wolves, and. I got those pages inside a chest. I thought it would be just to make one of those books that I never read. The wind rises. Search forth. Huh. Huh. Too slow. Um, Quit following me. Hang on. The waterfall, maybe. 
This where meat doesn't grow so far to go. It's their dimension. Treasure Hoarder Trash Journal. Discover an ancient ruin that remains unmarked on any map. The entrance has completely collapsed. If I manage to find a way in, I may discover some rare treasure. Convincing everyone that whatever is in there is gonna be worth your while. Our while was tough going. The next part is gonna be a walk in the park by contrast. There's no need to keep a low profile here. Didn't find an uh, all else, uh, but this arcane formation and the peculiar barriers around it. And after all that effort too, there seems to be someone trapped inside the barriers. Can't tell if they are alive or not. Well, I'm not going back empty-handed. Not after how far I've gone. That's just not my style. There means the pictures are filled with black stains, mark making the text unreadable. Take it and have fun. Where's this anchors the dimension? Order guide you. Should hit. Did someone drop their package? Hmm. 
gonna check things here before. Quit following me. Ah, yeah, not everyone. No, but this is this is your fringe. Two, three. Oh boy. <laughs> Unnecessary. <laughs> Too slow. Uh, these do look like the missing pages from the book. Uh, let's try putting one back in, shall we? Insert page. Page one. And then we just need to concentrate and meditate on the book, like before. The edges of the page glad we blur. Uh, oh, now I can read. Read countless volumes here. It appears that these books were left behind by an ancient order. Kingdoms rise and fall, and when a civilization is annihilated, a new one will be born after from the ashes, which these books refer to as Fortuna. It's somewhat rudimentary, but theoretically at least, it bears striking resemblance to the comp computational scheme I have formulated and termed world formula. All the records are bl blurred with age, but were I able to quantify them to some extent, they could be used in my world formula calculations. No matter how many times I derive it, the result remains the same. Though this result is not expected, unlike the world is depicted in these ancient texts, there will be no more new civilizations born, unless we consider introducing variables from outside the system. If it was, if it was that sort of power, there might be a change. So, if the traveler wasn't here to make changes, this world would end and wouldn't be able to be reborn. Maybe. Here found the magical techniques left behind by the Golden Troop. They seem to be referred to by various names. I'll go with this one for now. Based on my interpretation, it appears to be known as the seal of the chemical, chemi chemical, chimera, chemical, chemical marriage. I think it's supposed to be like chemical. Yeah. Uh, it consists of two parts, however, it has been weathered too much to decipher any more information. Interestingly, I have encountered similar symbols and documents from the Narcissus Crows Institute archives. They look complicated, yet the underlying principles are quite clear. If the records prove accurate, there are some key locations within the realm remaining. Related records may be found elsewhere as well. I should record my findings here for now, as they may prove useful in the future. Wow, this time even Paimo could start to understand. It seemed like the confusion was due to the pages that were missing before, huh? Awesome, let's put another page in now, shall we? Let's start meditating again. You want some more time to understand the page's contents, the edges of the play page blur, and the incomprehensible shapes the line leap forth as if mounted on a pop up book. Yet, before you can make sense of what's happening, there is a rush of noise all around you, and you return to the world as it was. The pollution of the land and water wrought by the giant beast Elinus. Ah, Elinus, the name of the uh, sea worm, seems to have been mostly purified and diluted. 
However, when it comes to readiness itself, even the adults seem to be at total loss. They simply cordon off the surrounding area. Nevertheless, it was quite easy to sneak in. It felt rather strange slipping into the creature's mouth. And it reminded me of events from some of the stories I once read. Though I have no substantive evidence, I still sensed some sort of will from it. Jacob did, too. Oh, there were no signs of decay in the flesh. Instead, its body was hardening, as if forming a protective membrane. Given its current immobilized state, it looked like a self-defense mechanism to safeguard its internal organs. Uh, so, there are still organs inside there. But it does make sense with such a wellspring of vitality, if my deduction is correct. It may also be used to enhance Jacob's strength by following the same principle. This sounds like another Jacob. That guy wasn't strong, he didn't fight. However, at this stage, there's no need to subject Jacob to such risks. I should get safe experimental data first through the Institute of Natural Philosophy, and then set specific research objectives. Although, as Jacob mentioned, this may waste a lot of precious time. After all, the flesh of alienness remains toxic, and the risk if Jacob Jacob has turned, he's quite brave, but also an idiot. He didn't give any thought to the possible consequences. He, we have no one else to rely on now. If he data we've collected is still incomplete, Jacob had a minor adverse reactions, primarily vomiting, but he recovered quickly and hasn't shown any other symptoms in the short term. His mental status and physical status remain stable. It's only possible because Jacob completely trusts me. Our lives are limited. Still, even if it's just for the future, we must find a way to get allies, get stronger and prevent disaster. Alain has enrolled in the Institute of Natural Philosophy. He should fit right in with the, his sharp mind. I brought the pocket watch he gave us and we compared time only to find there was already significant discrepancy. We agreed to meet at the institute. The brightest minds of Fontaine are gathered there and we can expect to make huge progress and get much needed help. As for Marianne, just the sight of her fills me with joy. We had a long discussion about the Narcissus St. Cross Institute. But Jacob was crying through most of it. I didn't tell them about Jacob. It's because Uncle Guillotine, who was with them, is part of the Mason Gardenage. Although he seems to be treating Alain and Marianne very well, he still can be trusted. After all, father and mother, it was all the doing of their lackeys and goons. Well, Paimon can read the words now, but the author's intent meaning is still a total mystery. We just have to put this last page in and see what we can get. Maybe the contest will link up to something. Ah, I didn't have to choose now. The test on Jacob's strength continue. As before, the flesh and blood of the great beast Elinus is being used as nutrition. Jacob seems to have gotten used to it, so there is nothing to worry about anymore. Thus, the adverse reactions observed before may just have been caused by Jacob's feelings of disgust. It's a relief to know that his physical condition hasn't been harmed. Jacob still eats, but only out of habit and no longer has a necessity for survival. But I suppose it's a good thing, because eating together is nice. It suddenly occurred to me that Jim was sim somewhat similar to the flesh and blood of Elinus, so I made a joke about it. 
Jacob seemed quite uncomfortable. The results have improved significantly in comparison to previous tests. Perhaps more can be done. Then the next step would be attempt to attempt opening the passage. The passage was opened successfully, so it only lasted a short while. During this time, many black monsters that were shaped like dogs emerged. They were very aggressive and terrifying, but thank goodness Jacob was there. Though he was so scared he was crying, he still managed to wipe them out while bawling. These monsters are identical to those we discovered during our desert expedition. Yeah, I think there were a few of them in the desert. However, they were salt grey, stiff and immobile at the time. Ah yes, so it was relatively safe. I'm certain their properties are nearly identical to those of Aminus. The Korean records mention passages appearing in large numbers. In numerous dangerous monsters that look like dogs emerging from them. It's very likely that they are the same type. It can be, ref it can be safely postulated that the locations this passage is linked to is full of these monsters. I, and I shall tentatively call them beastly rifts. Thus, these hounds may be called rift hounds. As you read faster and faster, you fall into a trance and arrive again at the mystery space. The vo same voice from before rings out. No matter how many times I run the calculations, the results are the same. Ah, the guy got trapped in there. After a few hundred years, all the birthing waters of the world will dry up. After a few hundred years after that, the world will become as it appears now before us. This is quite a predicament. Ah, it's not a different place, it's the future. Maybe. Hey, come now, don't cry. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm here, aren't I? Don't you trust me? Also, Alain and the others will definitely help. Also, I bet you'll definitely be able to survive this world. You're special. I know, I know. Your world, the constitution of, of others is different from yours. That's reasonable. Well... That's why we need to continue researching the things left behind by the Golden Troop. Perhaps we'll discover some new possibilities. We'll go back to the Narcissus and Cross Institute together and take a look, okay? The voice drifts away again after what feels like a long time, though in, the, in this world, time seems to no longer measure changes in matter. You hear the voice once more. Looks like you won't help us anymore. You are the only one I can rely on now. Hey, come on, don't be like that. I'm sad too, but I won't cry until after the fat lady sings. Moreover, we still have to find a way to cure him. Don't be scared. You'll go... It'll all go smoothly. There are already lots of people willing to listen to us. If we want to persuade them further... Besides believe, we also need ceremony. As for the name, we'll call it the Book of Revealing and put it in the form of a book. We'll use our secret cipher to write it. Everyone only sees the world that their cognitive framework allows them to see. But using these methods, we can share the visions we have foreseen with others. And just as you begin to listen closely to what the voice is saying, it begins to gradually fade away. At the same time, you feel the world around you suddenly begin to collapse, with a roaring sound resounding. You wake again. Are you okay? Was that an earthquake just now? Earthquake? What earthquake? Nothing happened here. Can she feel an earthquake? She's floating. Paimon did get a little dizzy, but it looked like you fainted. And you didn't wind up in some mysterious space again, did you? Just what's going on with the, the weird space anyhow? And if you think about it, it's pretty dangerous too. What if you go in and can't get back out? 
So, just what did you encounter inside? I seem to have witnessed a premonition that someone had. I seem to have heard a prophecy that someone had. Is there a difference? Uh, the pages we found before did mention something about deductions and calculations too. Could it be that the things revealed inside the space were actually the result of such deductions? Uh, if what you say is true, then this was actually a book of prophecies, wasn't it? But why make the format so complicated? If the author didn't want people to understand it, wouldn't it have been better to not write it at all? Actually, I also hear all kinds of sounds while I was meditating. But they were just like the songs of birds and flowers. I don't know anything about the prophecy you spoke of. It seems we must enter the space again to understand what is going on. If we meditate together, meditate together this time, we should be able to enter it. Paimon is too worried. Wait, Paimon wants to come too? No way is she gonna stay here alone. Once again, you focus upon meditating and the force surrounding you fades. The world grows silent. Then you hear the tiniest of sounds and a feeling that is wrath or perhaps grief wells up within your heart. And your very soul feels drawn to this mysterious sound. And as you follow the sound, the whole world, utterly alien, supremely familiar, races to meet you. Uh, where the hell did you wait up? Is this is like some kind of dreamscape? Um, this must be the strange place we were talking about before. It's much more vivid than before. Could be dangerous. Did the author of the book really create this place? And they hid such a big space inside it too? Uh, well, Paimon doesn't know how they did it, but this place looks like a ruin. Also, we meditated with Kanatilla to get here, but we're the only two people around right now. Yeah, they kind of got a mental connection by now, don't they? She didn't fall somewhere, did she? Oh no, things could get bad if she winds up in danger. Let's go find her. Hurry. Okay, this is getting way deeper than I expected. Huh. <laughs> it's the room. So, hang on, where are they from? Uh, area then? No, they said something about guillotine and stuff. He, he was a guy from the institute. Wait, what? There are stuff in here? And... Can I enter here whatever I want now? Huh. Uh, how is I supposed to get here without the Wanderer? I'm gonna be able to go up there. Oh, am I supposed to enter or just get there? Following me. Okay, maybe it's too some slow. things. Unnecessary. Okay, I definitely skipped some things. Okay, is there a chest over there? I don't think so. Ah! Come see, sir. That's Kanchil over there. Okay, Kanchil over here. 
Ancient Fates. Ancient Heroes. Oh, faster. Ah, there's some boots here. Any truth over here? Yeah, will I be able to enter here whatever I want? Poisonous mushroom this time. Huh, too slow. Huh, quit following. like something good is inside. Where they got you? Where did they get you? This is the Archon party because he's better than you. Okay, no, you will stay here. No, mm. you uh, kind of like having you around for a while there. I think she's too time worried. to get down to business. Remember, health comes first. Wind strike. Shrek. I'll uproot you. One with the force. Fallen leaves. Adorn my knight. <laughs> Let's nip that in the butt. Yeah, that was better. Who says there aren't benefits to a life of wandering? Hmm. 
I think it should go back there. Huh. Didn't check down there. The wind rises. Yeah, hold on there. Just double check, this will bring me back. Yeah. Huh. Too slow. Once the one got, got too much, but I didn't lose the other two. You even want this? Come on, get there. to interact with any of those okay who do I have with best electricity better yeah I can aim with her better than with no no sure Here, let me help you Maybe this is the order. But I don't know which one is the first one. Okay, maybe it doesn't really matter. Come back here. Take it and have fun. <gasps> Quit following me. Hmm. Hang on, that's my goal. Okay, so hang on.
There's that. supposed to actually climb around to get there. Oh, I got too close before. Uh, where did Canotilla go? She was just here a moment ago. Wait, there's something on the ground. Pick it up and take a look. If you got a page from a book. See that? That's the conclusion of the world formula arrived and after countless calculations. Uh, the scene we foresaw, the destruction after the cataclysm, and this world were not even a swift flower or mint can grow. Come on. But is the end of all things? That is the end of all things. Do you believe it at last? Whether you have arrived at this place via the book of revealing or the looking glass? Let me your strength. Then we may avoid this future. Just as I said, the, the only way is... Is this page the same one as... The same as the ones we found before? How do they help here? Let me see. It's easily readable. Is it because we are in this strange space? Cataclysm, destruction, some sort of apocalypse, what? Even if Paimon can read the wor words, it still doesn't make any sense. But put it together with the other pages, this appears to be a prophecy. Hmm. So, it's as we guessed previously. So, does it mean that this is the future the author wants us to see? A world where even sweet flowers and mints won't grow? Uh, that's a terrible place, no matter how you slice it. But if that really is the future, shouldn't they ought to tell everyone about it and find a solution? Why make a place like this? Maybe this is the only way everyone will believe it? Or maybe he has his own considerations. It also mentions that some kind of looking glass. Uh, seems like there are other ways to get in here. Still, Paimon doesn't think any of this will be much help in answering Conatilla's questions. Uh, forget it, who cares about some dumb prophecy anyway? The important thing right now is to find Conatilla. Let's keep going, keep looking. Uh. Oh. Yeah, but if this is the future he saw, and he made portals to this future, and the red hounds come from here, huh. and this is the future set already, huh. isn't it? Too slow. Uh, up there, but how can I look at there? Okay, huh. where does this takes me? This back there. What? Send her. There's a rift town, isn't it? Is this in danger? Wait, but I. You're in for a little shock. Try not to. She's really good. Nothing worth mentioning. No sign of Kanachilla or where she's gone. Uh, there's only this fellow here. That said, it doesn't seem to want to attack us anymore. There's a first for a rift hound, huh? Looks like he wants to say something to us. Not that we can understand it anyway. We shouldn't get too close just in case. Wait, is Paimon saying things? Uh, what's an ordinary little doggy doing here? 
where did the rich hound go? In this take a look, is there something wrong with my mosaic? It might be a rich hound. Anything can happen in a dream. Is it trying to us to go through that passage over there? Judging from its reaction, Paimon gets right. Who knows where it's gonna lead? But we weren't able to find Kanatila anywhere, so maybe she did live via that way. And it looks like there's no other route we can take, so let's just try it and see what happens. Yeah. I think I'll bring Barbara to the party. I'll take care of it. These bombs. Uh, hang on, let's go back there now. Where would that take me? Because that was my objective before. What's the point of the other one then? It made me do the same path? Oh. Yeah, in this um, warm space that they use to travel around, are rifts that could lead you here. Uh, we came right back, or maybe we never even left. Oh, you had the same reactions I did, Paimo. Cantilla, we were looking all over for you. Paimo kept calling out for you, but you never responded. That place was so dangerous, but you just ran around all over the place. Dangerous? The place we there was so serene and peaceful, like a beautiful garden. Uh, but all we saw was Robo. That's odd, I kept looking for you too back in the previous space, but there were big trees and flowers everywhere, so I got lost. Fortunately, I followed the sound of a bird and then found a golden butterfly, which brought me up to the top of the garden. What about the rift hound? We saw you in a rift hound. Alright, oh, the rift hound even turned into a dog. Uh, now it feels like Pam was just talking nonsense. I saw a little dog too, on top of the garden there was a cute little dog that nodded at me and helped open the way out, of, out for me. I thought you both had gone somewhere else to play and that I didn't need to worry, so I just came back here. And you? What did you discover? Nothing special, we found another page. Right, we found this inside, though so we don't know if it will be useful. It also looks like a page from the book. You open the page you found and show it to Kanatila. The butterfly. It's the golden butterfly. Huh? What are you talking about? I can see golden butterflies flying out from the page, just like the one I saw in the space before. Uh, <sighs> Do you remind solving anything? We've got even more problems on our hands now. Seems like you really did see something completely different in that space. Mm, if that space is the future predicted by the author, then why did you see a garden? Just thinking about that makes my head hurt. But I was very happy inside. I didn't even think about those questions. Maybe that's what the book was trying to tell me all along. Even if we perceive differently, if we can communicate our feelings to one another, maybe the essence of things doesn't matter all that much after all. I wouldn't say that we had a great time there, but if you figure out things for yourself, good on you. Still, the place is pretty sketchy, and we don't yet have any clue as to what's up with the prophecy either. Speaking of the prophecy, this book makes it sound really scary, sure, but what if the things I saw were the real future? After all, such things aren't set in stone, are they? And since the book mentions other ways to enter that space, we may be able to figure this book and its prophecy out if we find them. And then maybe we can meet there again in that space. It might be better if we just meet in reality, 
Also, Conchilla, don't go running around that space anymore. Silver page. Conchilla. Uh, this, this book is supposed to be read like that. Since memories can be made into books, if we reverse the logic, books can also be written directly into memories. Uh, what is it? Is there something you'd like to ask about the Book of Revealing? Uh, no matter how you think about this, converting memories into books is quite an incredible deed. The creator of this book must have only been able to do this because they viewed the emotions in their memories as the most precious thing in the world. That doesn't change how difficult its contents are to parse, though. Mm, I've got a new page with me. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, if found one or more new pages, just put them inside the book. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I think I'm gonna just continue the other quest from Amir now. And I'll keep exploring the overworld on my own. Once I got all the books, I'll probably all the pages. Once I get all the pages, I'll come back here. I hope that one's the last one. So it's 12, no more than that. Okay, if I... Oh, I'll... I would guess each page will add a new section to that world. So, so just it's not new area necessarily. More text in new area. Uh, okay, let's find the fishing. Well, no. Swan Fury. Let's switch much text, but those are very interesting revelations. Even confused. This one looks like the Elder. Blue Crop Finch. Huh. <laughs> you even want this? Oh, there. Behold. Mm, there are no fishes here. I thought I'll have to fish. Yara. I have got your fishing rod out over here. Are you really fishing? There's water in a rod. Of course I'm fishing. Do you think that you outsiders don't even know that? Uh, what's this world coming to? Seriously. I don't think this has anything to do with the global trains. I'm sure Paimon knows what fishing is. That's right, we're not complete amateurs of fishing either, you know? What Paimon meant to say is, you know, it's kind of weird for Melusin to be using a fish rod. Paimon didn't think you fish like that. Uh, I'm not being weird, I learned this from an outsider. De La Roche is a great person, she not only taught me how to fish, but she also gave me a new a rod too. Hers looked nicer, of course, but that's fine. She's a professional, and I'm just a hobbyist. Still, I've been waiting here for long, so long. Why haven't I got a single bite? In that case, why don't you let us pros help you figure out where you're going wrong? Uh, are the two of you really better than Della Rush? She's a professional with a very pretty fishing rod. Uh, looks like we might have to prove our skills, eh? But are there actually any fish here? Uh, now that you mention it, uh, there really aren't any. Paimon thought there was weird right from the gecko, too. Fish? The Laroche did say that not all waters have fish in them. So does that count as a fish? If that isn't a fish, uh... Could it be the reason that I can fi fish it up in the first pa place? 
Mr. Eagles, Mr. Paimon, please tell me. What I must do to fish that up? That what? Uh, you're sure polite? Well, of course we'll help you. But first off, what's that thing you're referring to? It moves very quickly in the water. And uh, it's also slippery that it's really hard to catch. That does sound like a fish. It sounds like a melusine, really. Seriously? Wouldn't it be weird if Yara and other melusines were to play pretend fishing games together? Well, whatever the case, we can be sure that it's something that lives in the water. But since we can't really see its silhouette, that it must be hiding deep down. If I will seize it, we need to spread some bait out and get it to come to the surface. But it ate so much bait already, I'm not sure if switching baits will help. Well, let's just spread some out first and prepare a rod. Then wait for it to bite. And we don't know well, what it is yet, but oh well. What beautiful technique. Let me try again. I'll give you the bait, Master Eagles, Master Paimon. And then I'll read my rod, even though it's not a professional spread rod. Oh, that's not a problem. Just leave spreading the bait out to us. Spread bait. Uh, we will still be attracted to the bait. But those are the beautiful techniques of fishing. Am I supposed to attack it? It's not even fighting back. You wanna place the weakened ball octopus in the waiting bucket? What a lovely fishing technique, but this creature is now no longer beautiful. How did this happen? Sorry, we didn't think the thing you were talking about was a ball octopus. So we... Uh, it's my fault. I was concerned that it might attack us. Yeah, when there's danger at hand, you've got to strike first, you know? Oh well. Don't apologize. It is in the bucket now, and that's enough for me. If say so, but seriously, how did a ball octopus end up here? Did it follow the flow and then fall in by accident? I caught it outside. Wait, what? I wanted to be sure of my skills at using the fishing rod, which is why I went to go catch that ball octopus, I think you call it. If I put it here, I'd be able to fish it up wherever I wanted. Or, so, or that was the plan anyway, but I waited and waited and it wouldn't bite no matter what. Uh, it's kind of concerning how you capture one and put it in a pool to practice fishing with a rod. But well, we just spread some bait out in the water and it came out just like that. Don't you think of doing something like that? Didn't you think of doing something like that, Yara? I tried many different types of bait. Uh, like minced meat, breadcrumbs, worms, mints, components. It would just eat them and then disappear. I was even starting to think that bait had no effect on it. Components? That uh, doesn't sound like bait. Best not to feed strange things to aquatic products. Uh, so, ball octopi can actually eat mechanical components. No. That's right, hang on. What kind of name is aquatic products? Um, components are very, very important since they, they are not meant to be used as bait. I need to find a way to get them back. Anyway, Mr. Ings, Mr. Paimo, please take this component as thanks for your help. Oh, it's fine. We didn't do all that much, anyway. Uh, but the LaRoche said that you need to call people master when you ask them for help. And that they will like it when you pay them consultation fees. <laughs> Is that not the case? Uh, please take this track component. Uh, it will be very useful to you in Mercy Village. Well, if you say so, yeah, thanks a lot. Yes, I hope that I can learn more beautiful fishing techniques from you too in the future as well. Investigate. A disturbing noise comes from you, I think. Uh, so, it actually does fit. 
If you try harder, Mr. Prime, you'll be able to fit inside too. But Prime doesn't want to work hard. Oh, it's you, my teacher. Are you going to teach me some of your brilliant fishing techniques today too? Uh, how have things gone for you recently? Yep. After learning that what you taught me is getting lots of baits, I learned how to attract fish. But catching them can still be pretty tough. I haven't got too many, but the fish in the surrounding waters sure do get plumper. That's something, I guess. Mm -hmm. Squall and Fury! Search for it! Okay, so... Where was it? Quit following me! Behold! Mamir, we've collected a, bu a whole bunch of components. Will this do? You've collected so many in such a short time. Amazing. I guess that's what I should expect from outlanders who experienced lots of things and met lots of people. Huh, we've done this sort of thing loads of times before, after all. That said, how are we going to use these components to fix Seymour? Don't worry, just leave it to me. Things will be alright. Just like father, father said. She opens the mobile robot dog up along the slit on its back in a manner ill befitting of repairs. Then she stuffs the scattered components on the ground into the dog seemingly without looking, as one might when well practiced at one's job. With that done, she takes out a strange mechanical component from her pocket. It resembles an intricately prepackaged candy. With some in the silverable runes carved into it. She embeds this into the gear on the dog's head. With a clack, they come together. Components of unknown purpose skitter across the ground. She picks them all up. They are as valuable as more in this place after all. But she doesn't care about more. Will this really work? It might just be Paimon's imagination, but it feels like more components dropped than we collected in first place. On that note, the thing you pulled out a moment ago seems kind of different from those components. This? Well, it's not a component, it's a token. Token. That's right. It was something we were all born with. Father said that if we put this in as well, we'll be we'd be able to cure Seymour. Wh how were you born? I'm really curious now. Wait, you were born with it. Does that mean? Actually, I'm not sure how Melusins are born in the first place. I'm not sure either. Now that I'm considering it, but in my first memories, I had the token with me. That's how it is for everyone. Are those the first generation of Melusins? Uh, then isn't it something really valuable to you? Yes, tokens are very important to us. They're different from ordinary components. They were the first memento we received when we arrived in this beautiful world. They are proof that we are alive. But if that's the case, why did you just use it like that? Well, I didn't throw it away or anything. Samuel would be by my side, right? And he is this way because he tried to save me, so... Relay module detected, environment check. Contamination levels high, activating in safe mode. Oh, it suddenly moved. Identify life forms detected, related information entered. It is a pleasure to meet you, Miss Mamir, and there is the panel. You have entered this day. But previously, it is an honor to meet you, Miss Noble Mr. Ignus and Pamo, the adorable little one. Thank you for your help in the previous altercation. 
I am prototype for a CV07. You may call me Seymour. Oh, he's a prototype. Is that why he speaks? Up to today for... <laughs> uh, one seventh times 10 to the 21 clockwork cycles. My functions were in hibernation, awaiting their awakening by my master, such that I may continue fulfilling my assignment. Uh, hibernation? Couldn't you talk normally before, though? By normal speech, you refer to my pre-configured automated responses, yes? Huh? Your observation is most sharp, almost comparable to that of my master. Previously, when you will bring my artificed clockwork relay module nearby, Miss Mamir, my voice unit would be automatically triggered. An artificed clockwork relay module? Are you referring to her token? What all they would have, right? I apologize, but I cannot answer your question. I don't understand the meaning of this token you refer to. As such, I can make no judgment as to any relationship between this token and said artificed relay module. Regardless, while hibernating, I would automatically play preset responses to specific situations to ensure that my voiceover unit would work properly once energy supply was reduced. Restored. Uh, in other words, you were just playing fixed lines before. Is that what you mean? Affirmative. Your understanding is completely correct, Paimo, as befits your elegance and wisdom. A uh, large amount of energy is required to operate my natural language processing unit. My logic unit actively shuts it off when power supply cannot be guaranteed so as to prevent complete loss of my functionality so that means so other things you said to me before were just pre-written affirmative your understanding is correct miss mamir during my previous hibernation our interactions were all performed through the playback of pre-recorded voice assets uh, uh -oh. however my visual information processing models were not shut off so I do have the paintings you displayed in my memory unit. I can recognize more than 103,000 900 different styles of art, but your work does not match any of them. As such, I can reasonably infer that your art has unprecedented artistic value, I did not mention this before using my preset voice assets, so consider this appended to any previous related comments. Really? Affirmative. You see, the only reason people don't understand your art is because your style is too new and unique. So don't worry about it, they'll get it in the future for sure. Thank you, Seymour, Paimon. I was afraid that... See, even Seymour says so. You've gotta believe in yourself and believe in us too. We understand your paintings and they are truly beautiful. In that case, thank you all for your help in restoring my lost relay module. This way I will be able to better fulfill my mission, protect my master. My master me Mamir is that why you suddenly activated to protect her when she was in danger. Negative. I am infinitely grateful to her for taking care of me during my hibernation. However, she is not my master. My master is... is... I apologize. Some of my memories have suffered light damage. Inference caused by previous damage. Unable to locate data related to master. Reason for, for previously emergency activation is unknown. That should not have happened. I must schedule logic unit maintenance. Well, why don't we have something to eat, Seymour? You've never eaten anything before. Maybe you'll we'll figure something out once you had your fill. Not every problem can be solved by eating, you know, just most of them. 
estimated data damage high, attempting global search for relevation, relevant information, searching less recorded segment, failure, critical data damage, search procedure has been forcefully terminated. Uh, are you really okay? It feels like you're getting worse somehow. Thank you for your concern, Mr. Miss Paimon, but do not worry. I was merely running a self diagnostic a self diagnostic. I can confirm that everything is operating normal. Oh, what's going on? It was accompanied by quake this time. Warning extreme increase in environmental contamination detected. For safety, please leave this place to avoid reverse irreversible damage. Wait, what kind of contamination are you talking about? What's going on? Uh, the spam of father says it's dangerous. Hurry! Father again? Wait, what danger? What do we have to hurry and do? The scattered melusines. Danger. There's no time to explain. Please help me. Whatever the case is, Spymon has a real bad feeling about the quake just now. Maybe it has something to do with what Mamir was talking about. Let's get going. Mm. No, hang on, let me pass through here. The wind rises. Well, they are here. Shouldn't they live too? There's much left to do. But the earthquake just a while ago. Indeed, what was the earthquake earlier? It didn't seem to have any negative consequence, but for things to start shaking so strongly all of a sudden, I had to report this to Monsieur Novelet. I need to do my best to Behold. Be I have no materials I order for right yet. This is very similar strange. My sisters. Hey, I haven't spoken to other people. But the earthquake just will go to think that Pukas run off at a time like this. Well, since she's got friends with her, things can be too bad, right? Okay, the there are a lot of probably, probably always have that. Okay, so nobody will really worry about. I've never seen before, Traveler. Would you like to try some Mercy Village specialties? The earthquake? Oh, you mean from just now? Oh, seriously, I made, it made all the pies I made earlier drop. Uh, a unfamiliar face. Where'd you come from? How'd you come to our village? Oh, don't be nervous. You must be an adventurer from afar. Sorry, force of habit from work. Just want to say hello. Yeah, I'm not gonna ask everything, talk to everybody about everything. Just earthquake. Uh, everything shook super hard back there. Uh, how's a person supposed to rest like this? Fortunately, the village seems fine. Hopefully, the other areas aren't affected either. Uh, you look like from outside the village, excuse me, but would you accept my request for an interview? No, no. Earthquake. Oh, you mean you felt the rumbling in the earth too? This is the first floor village. Uh, my journalistic intuition tells me that some big scoops about to come along. <laughs> Swan Fury! Yeah. But Earthquake? Uh, it was so intense that all my fish got scared off. Speaking of that, uh, did it happen just as Delaware said it might? Uh, did a whole school of line breakers strong enough to shake Mercy Village appear? If that's the case, I'll do more reason for me to guard this fishing spot. I'll show them the strength of my will. Behold! I wonder what sort of clothes are in fashion over in the city of Fontaine. Uh, are you wearing the latest and greatest by any chance? Uh, earthquake? Oh, was it just me or was everything shaking a bit just now? Oh dear. Frida said that she'd be going out to train. Will she be alright? 
never seen one around before. Your new face from outside too. Normal humans don't come around here often. Are you an adventurer then? I heard that they run around all over the place just like you. Is that true? An earthquake? Did you hear the noise too? Something huge must have happened. Maybe some secret treasure was dug up or something. That's what happens in the stories I've read. Uh, pity that my big sister won't let me leave the village whenever I want. If not, I had been the first one to discover the treasure. That would have been a fine start to my adventure. Let me steal your window. The wind rises. Uh, they've grown. I can get them. It's my flower garden today. The earthquake. That was so scary. Thankfully, my garden is alright. I thought that some bad guys were coming to ruin it again. But I've got to protect the flowers. We work so hard to grow together. Bingo. Uh, how's cultivation in flowers proceeding? How is this actual flowers going? After a good machine got dug out, no, no bad British air premises returned to make a mess of things. As such, my precious, precious as such flowers are growing healthily. How is your cultivation of new flowers proceeding? To be honest, I don't know where to start just yet, but if I can make the leaves of these flowers grow into the shape of the Tauga, I might be able to shock the world at the next horticultural fair. Okay, can I? Can we play something else? No. Swan Fury. Huh? Unnecessary. Rises. Hang on, what's this area? Here? Uh, okay, I'm not sure if this area was here. A very bright place. Wait a second, why this things be here? Was a reaction detected through the semi intermediate, semi inter sweeper modes. Oh, that was not time to read everything. Oh, I want to see if that. Let's dance. Swan Fury. Uh, this monster got rid of, but there's no melody inside. Which, uh, yeah. I think the Rift Hounds have something huge to do with the melodies then. Or at least with the area, the most. The. The, the region in Elina. But then why is the. Golden Wolf Lodge over here. Twist the beast for another world. This creature is the ruler of the Rift Wolves. And will use the power to command them to dissolve space itself. Yeah, I thought I thought this lore will be expanded here. Unnecessary. Let the show begin.
here before. Ah, it is down there. Can you say more swing? Yeah. Uh, there really is nothing here. Are you sure this is the place? It should be. Father couldn't be wrong. Still, Paimon didn't expect the same or could dive. Affirmative. I am equipped with the latest multi use diving unit, with which I may always accompany my master and those composed of pure water. The. Uh, Amir? Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, where did you come from? Sorry, did I scare you? Those monsters kind of just came jumping out of those glowing circles. So I hid in the cleft of the rocks. It's all good as long as you're okay. Are you alone? No, there's a friend of mine who's been trapped over there. That child's name is Puka. Uh, tall one. Uh, could I... Please ask you to rescue her. Leave it to us. Yes, let's go. Uh, they just... What's he staining? I can't really stand. Get away from me, just a normal middle sim, not taste at all if you eat me. Uh, don't I need not there? What? I didn't Break the other one. Thank you, tall person. Thank you, good hearted Spectre. <laughs> Hang on a sec, who are called Spectre? Paimon is Paimon. This is Ignus. In a way, what was all that just now? Why are the two why are you two in a place like this? I don't know what happened earlier either. The ground suddenly started to shake and those scary scary monsters started to show up. Puka and I were here to pick up those beautiful stones we've been here many times and this never happened nor have we ever seen those frightening creatures so i've been waiting wanting to ask this but why is mamir here mamir brought us here um but how did you know we were here father told me he told me that you were in danger and that i should ask ignos and Pamela to come to save you father I see, so it was Father who asked you to come save us. Thank you, Mamir. Uh, so you know who Father is? Glysty. Uh, no. Still, Mamir always talks to herself about how she's able to speak to Father. I've always supposed that it's her imaginary friend. She's largely alone or otherwise. I don't know what's going on, but thank you all the same. Don't thank me. I didn't do anything. Father's the one who told me about what to, told me what to do. My apologies for interrupting, Miss Mamir. Miss Puka, considering our surroundings, I suggest that we leave the space post haste to avoid further attacks. Ah, another dog appeared. Calm down, Puka. This is the robotic dog Mamir picked up before, right? No, uh, it couldn't move before, though, could it? A keen observation, Miss Gleisty. Uh, regardless, my logic circuits recommend that we do not tarry. Please allow me to escort you to safe location. The contamination index here has exceeded the threshold for human tolerance. There aren't humans. Uh, contamination index. Could it be related to the, to the hallucinations I saw earlier? A safe place, so do we just need to go back home? 
Yep, Paimon doesn't know what Samer means by this contamination index stuff. But we might get attacked again if we stay here. So let's get you all home safe first. Got it. Thank you, Miss Paimon. You've got a good heart. Alright, let's go. Oh. There? Like hell, I will check here. Oh. It seemed more special than just a silly. the same spot am I? Oh, there are more houses underwater. Oh, so there was a village here too, huh? Yes, this place is closer to the RV, so as for me, I'm here because it makes it easier to care for my injured animals in the area. Uh, anyway, we should be safe once we reach home. Thank you, Inus Pamo. Thank you as well, Mamir. If it wasn't for you, we might have never made it back. Let's have tea next time we get a chance. Mm. Oh, come on. Now it's not that time to be shy. I'm not shy. I'm just... Oh, never mind. I understand. In that case, we'll go back first. Thank you for escorting us in the spy mode. See you. Stay safe. Shouldn't they have more hydrodynamic uh, shapes? Well, guess our rescue mission is done and dusted, huh? Thank you for your help and for being willing to trust me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known what to do when faced with those monsters. Negative. According to hypotheticals generated from previous data, lady. My super mode would have been capable of negating the threat posed by those hostile life forms. Ah, so I could just leave you there and you'd be able to deal with them. If not for this gentleman's help, however, I would not have eliminated them as quickly. Thank you for your aid. Uh, Ings and Paimon are well seasoned adventurers, no? Still, uh, what are those things doing inside Elinus? And they appeared alongside a quake too. They are my least favorite monsters. No, yeah, inspectors are still more bothersome to fight. I wonder how father is doing. Speaking of that, Paimon thought that father was a secret only the Melusins knew about. Paimon didn't think that the other Melusins hadn't heard of him either. That's right, no one can hear his voice. Just like how no one can understand the painting's contents. 
they would think that I was talking to myself whenever I spoke of pa father. Uh, that's understandable. That means that the voice I heard then was... Well, now that we've seen you repair Seymour and take us to help Puka and such, but I'm unsure that your father must be a decent person. Absolutely, he's the best in the world. Oh, everything's shaking again. I'm interested, how would you feel a quake underwater? You can probably feel them, but I'm not sure how it would be. You know, spam on those monsters. They've appeared elsewhere. Huh? This time they show up where we're collecting where we're collecting paints previously. You mean the place with large house and sh shipwreck? It's a long way there from here. Yes, I know. What should we do? Don't make any time. There's no need to take the long way. We can ascend directly from here. Uh, but there should be no path up there. We have just completed a f I have just completed a full scan of the surrounding areas. We need only penetrate the layers of rock above us to reach Mercy Village directly. That will allow us to reach our destination in good time. Uh, it's not as simple, you know? What do you mean need only penetrate the layers of rock above us? How do we do that? I detect a lack of faith in my functionality, Miss Paimon. Concern is unnecessary. My most advanced mining module can penetrate rock layers for this of the this thickness. No, but sir, Ignus, please take me to the waters above. above. I cannot maintain diving into operation while my mining module is active. No, I guess he can do that too. No? Well, we could just teleport. But it would be interesting to open a shortcut. Hold on, let me check the map again. There's a path here that leads there. Uh. But we'll be able to. Ah, that pond there. That's what he's going to open for me. Just mesh that to pieces. Oh, pretty strong, aren't you saying? Actually, that's not the time to worry about that. Come on, let me back. There. Don't we have a teleport? Oh, a warp. Ah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's related to the rifts. Come on, I want to test the other thing on them. Hmm, yeah, Simmer does seem to be losing health. No, oh, it is. Prismatic resonance shares the aura and a melusine unexpectedly falls out. We are sure to help her. Unfortunately, she doesn't appear to be injured. 
You're the um, Amir, what are you doing here? And you are but my spy with his signals, my mirror brought us here. Is that so? Thank you all. My name is Virda, but just call me V. Vi? V. Virda. It's probably not Fighter. Virda. Virda. Call me V. I'm an apprentice. I'm agent of the Marshalsi Phantom. Still, uh, I didn't think I would get into this mess. How embarrassing. An apprentice agent. Oh, so you are with the authorities of Infotain? Uh, no, no, it's a self-proclaimed title at the moment. One day, though, I'll be a proper agent, just like said, said you. Uh, wait, so can you give yourself the title? Anyway, what happened just now? Why did you end up hiding inside a rock? Uh, I didn't do something like that. I don't remember. I just remember falling down while fleeing, but nothing else after that. That was father protecting you. Father? Uh, never mind that for now. Even in Japan, we don't know what's that, what that's about. More importantly, are there any other medicines trapped here? No, I didn't see anyone else. I was doing special training alone here, after all. But I did catch sight of some humans I've never seen before. Might have been four of them. Humans? You've never seen before? What? Wait just a sec. Did you come across some purple guy and three people in red scarves? That's right. Are you... Are they your friends? Uh, how should we explain this? You tell weird about what happened before. Uh, so that actually happened. Now that I think about it, they were behaving very suspiciously. Uh, I guess I still have a lot to learn. Where's the deal in my shoes? Did you see which way they went? Yes, they were heading that way. Alright then, let's go after them. Ah, they're coming back. This is where this thing is still chasing us. You don't look like I know you, numbskull. Uh, it's just bad luck. Uh, come on, are they seriously still coming? Uh, it's those suspicious people. Stop, don't run. Be careful, those things behind them are... Uh, you're... Uh, please help, we'll pay you, I swear. Oh, all those monsters are coming this way, careful. Access hostile reactions detected, switching to purification mode. For your own safety, Miss Mamir, please keep a certain distance. Wow, all those people to find too? Squall and Fury! We're just finding some that we don't need to sink this to. Yeah, it should start it later, at the very least. Unsightly insects! The wind rises! Save the last. Whoa, hey, what are you doing? Arresting the mastermind behind the summoning of those these creatures. What else? Oh, wait, we didn't do anything. We we're just being chased by those monsters. Honest. What's going on? Does everything. Also, what about the purple guy? Where is Jacob? That's right, confess. Whatever. Now that's, that it's come to this, we might as well come clean. Just our luck. Seriously, we should never have taken this job. The mammon got us to bring him those red stones, you know? Those you gathered previously. He said they're, they'd be important. 
important for what? For whatever the heck he was going to do with them. He didn't tell us anything else, just gave me the oars. My armor, uh, we're me mercs, not miners. And we did it for him, right? For half a day we worked. And at the end of it, he didn't even pay us when we gave him this, his damn oars. He even started saying some weird stuff. We hadn't even caught what he said before he took the fragments and left. Dropping us like a sack of potatoes, we are useless and I, and, uh, I guess always are the best and no pay either. I was going to get even with the scoundrel but he did some hand sign and blabbered out something in a language I didn't know. That's when those monsters appeared, and they chased us all the way here. Why, that scumbag. This is some of the monsters at the other locations. What, what other locations are talking about? The same monsters appear in areas around the village, and they are attacking Melusins wherever they find them. Wait, did something like that happen? I didn't know, I swear. After leaving your place, that Jacob guy led us to the intersection up ahead. We didn't really delay. So basically, he never told you anything except that you should go steal the paintings. Uh, don't even bring that up. Never mind telling us anything. That charlatan didn't even pay us our deposit. Why work so hard for someone who doesn't even pay a deposit? Is it because you thought he was handsome? Uh, so you like purple, do you, boss? What in the world are you talking about, you idiots? Of course not. How's that guy handsome anyway? Also, what kind of reason is I like purple? Uh, well, he sure looked like he was in the mora. I hope uh, the little extra enthusiasm might get him to part with more of it. So I decided to waive his deposit. And that's... What do you call a side flicks wound? Uh, looks like we won't be able to get anything useful from these guys. How should we deal with them now? And don't worry, leave to me. I'm not an official agent yet, but I can escort them back to the village and hand them over to Sedil, no problem. Oh wait, just a moment. Aren't we victims too? You, you ransacked my house, hurt Seymour, and still you claim to be victims. Uh, that's right, that's... wait. Whose house did they ransack? Stop, that's not the main point. Exactly. To think that you even do something like that, you are incorrigible. Come with me now and don't you dare resist. Wait, you're going after the guy, aren't you? We, we know where he's gone. Listen, he's headed toward the place where the giant rock's hanging. You know over that way. If you give chase now, you could still catch him. The place is giant stone, wait, you mean? It's a warm place that makes people at ease. Why would you tell us this? Even so, we won't let you off so easy. Hey, even mercenaries know how to be picky about our, our employers. That self-serving monster summoning fraudster is no employer of mine, no matter how much he's offered. Not that he even paid, not that he even paid us the deposit in the first place. I mean, uh, everything's shaking again. Oh, but this time there wasn't the red effect around. Hey, sis, do you think this earthquake could be crap? If more of those monsters show up, hey, shorty, you wanted to arrest us, right? Quick, do it now. We surrender unconditionally. That's more like it. Go reform yourselves at the fortress of Miropid and learn to be useful to society. Uh, guess we'll leave them to you. We'll get to the bottom of these quakes. Alright, Mercs, don't get any funny ideas or the Maison Gardenage will, are gonna show you what for. I disarm the mercenaries and lay their hands. Virgie takes them away. 
So, uh, what are we supposed to do now? Ah, doubt effect. Uh, Amir, what's wrong? You don't look good at all. No, it's not that. It's father. It hurts. No. Why are you doing that? I heard it too. And you look just as horrible. You, know, you heard something. What did you hear? I'm fine, but... We must hurry. We're out of time. That's right. There's no time. If you say that, shouldn't you rest for a bit? You look like you're hurting all over. Yes, it hurts. I've never experienced anything like this before. But I must go. Father must be suffering far more than I am. Please, Enos Paimo, please take me there. To the place where we get a high purity horse earlier. Okay, let's go. There should be a shortcut we can take. Oh. Oh, come on, a new part just started. I... Uh... Is everything fine oh, out here? Okay, so I'm gonna end here. I got a bit derailed a, a bit with the other quest. But I have no idea how long this will take. Oh, I got one. Hmm. Alright, and I'm out. Huh?